Hello and welcome back to Finance Local. We hope that you all enjoyed a short break and are ready to dive back into our programming. For those of you that weren't here during session one, my name is Alexina Prather and I am the program manager of Access Helps. And before we dive into our final, excuse me, our final speaker for the day, I'd like to share our story with you. So with the support of Microsoft, Philanthropies, and City, Access Helps was powered by the team at Urban Impact Lab and stood up in March of 2020 in just two weeks time. It was created to help our residents of South Florida navigate the influx of resources and information at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. In standing up this platform, our team quickly realized that resources were indeed difficult to navigate during the start of the pandemic but that this has always been a major challenge for our community. In speaking directly with small business owners, we found a huge gap in access to capital. And we've heard this theme throughout the day from our national speakers to our entrepreneurs on the ground in Miami. This is something we hope to begin finding solutions for during part two. And we'd love to have you all join us for that workshop. Next, I just want to take a quick moment to highlight our amazing AT members and partners. These can be found on the Access Helps website on our About page. Access Helps is a valuable resource because of the work that these service providers do. Those organizations are Branches, Catalyst Miami, Hispanic Unity of Florida, Prospera, Saint La, SBDC at FIU, and the Urban League. We are able to make direct handoffs and suggestions to our users to a network of organizations that are locally based, trusted, known within the county. We are currently expanding this list and are very excited to share some updates about that soon. Last but not least, I want to mention the impact that we've seen. Since March of 2020, we've had more than 200,000 unique visitors to our site, 275,000 page visits. We've listed more than 250 resources that have come and gone over time since March of 2020. And we've partnered with more than 15 locally run organizations to help amplify this work. We contacted more than 500 families via phone to help them navigate the rental assistance programs in English, Spanish, and Haitian Creole. And we are just getting started. There's so much more that we can do for our community and we want to thank you all for being a part of it. So now it is with great pleasure that I would like to announce our final speaker of the day, Commissioner Eileen Higgins of Miami-Dade County District 5 will join us on stage to discuss the RISE Miami-Dade Fund and hopes for the future. Similar to other resources on access, RISE is a product that was designed with small business owners in mind. And we hope that more products like RISE will continue to be developed and are so grateful for all of you that are here to help make that happen. So Commissioner Eileen Higgins, whenever you are ready, please take it away. All right. Well. Thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, I'll try to make it short and sweet since we've we've been here listening to people that are a lot smarter than I am about how to create a robust uh, small business ecosystem. And it's great to be around you all because for better or worse, uh, the pandemic uh, revealed uh, both the weaknesses in our small business ecosystem here in Miami-Dade County, but it also revealed the strengths, right? That we can come together, we can coalesce, and we can figure out um, how to create new products, new services, new ways of assisting, and, and deploy those things really rapidly. And Access Helps is an excellent example, right? Lots of things going on. Nobody knew where to apply for things. We quickly um, deployed uh, an incredibly new, uh, incredible new service to, to make things happen for residents and for, for business owners. And I'm proud to say that they're now part of our county budget um, going forward as a permanent arm of, of, uh, of Miami-Dade County. Uh, remembering back to the way, way beginnings of the pandemic when the federal government was announcing all of these great programs that were gonna save our small businesses and the first rounds of PPP and IDLE essentially uh, didn't do the job for the kinds of businesses we have here. And Marta did a great job at showing you how small uh, they are. And, and that is when we all came together and it really was, we've been talking a lot about teamwork around this. It was a team of um, on Zoom, we were all on Zoom at that time, uh, coming together 
of CDFIs, the Miami Foundation, um, Inez, Martha, the whole group, everybody getting together to say, how can we do something that, that, that doesn't leave our small businesses uh, out of, of these programs in the future? And that's kind of the genesis between uh, about the RISE Fund. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you what I think I learned in that process is our small business community here in, in Miami-Dade County is super independent, right? And, and, and many reasons for that is they're from immigrant communities, right? They come over here, they move to the United States, they're on their own, bootstrapping their way up. And being an independent uh, small business is great when times are good. But during the pandemic, which was the worst of the worst times, right? Uh, and for a long time, independent meant isolated and alone. Whereas what we really need for the future of this, um, of our community and our small businesses, given how many people they employ, is they can't be independent. They need to be interconnected. And when the pandemic hit, uh, we can blame PPP, but the reality is these small business owners weren't connected. They weren't connected to their, their banks. They weren't connected to whether it's a chamber of commerce. They weren't connected to CDFIs. They weren't connected to, um, for example, Urban Impact Lab. They weren't connected to Prospera, which does business technical assistance for our Hispanic business. They were literally, I'm running my business alone, which works fine when times are good and is not a good tactic when times are bad. And so one of the things I'd like to do in our county is make sure as we come out of this post-pandemic era that we have a web of interconnection that supports our small business community. And guess what? They may not need it now or next year or the year after, but should we ever encounter any other issues again, or if you're a small business owner that suddenly has found a new way to grow, you're already connected to the kinds of things that you need. And it's not always financial assistance, right? Sometimes it is. It's access to capital. Um, can I own my building versus renting my building? But it, it's also knowing the kinds of business planning, risk management, uh, the digital divide. It didn't just, it wasn't just about school kids during the pandemic. There was a huge digital divide among our small businesses. Some of them, you know, could, could barely um, function on a computer. Others of them were, were more sophisticated, but had no ability to do digital marketing or, or move to that world. Others, once you begin to become more online, I think Pilar talked about it. Now you're at a different level of technology. So that's my... Um, my goal, we're, I'm going to show you a, a short, I guess, video or movie. Uh, we, our team has been talking a lot about the need to storytell about uh, small businesses. And uh, I know March is very good and, and they do beautiful PowerPoint slides with all the charts and the data. But we wanted to tell some stories and, and we're, we're not quite finished with it, but I'll, I'll show you our, our video. And there's two reasons for this. One is we want to show potential funders the impact of participating in small business uh, funds. And the other is to show small business owners the impact of being connected to these kinds of, of resources. And of course, going forward, my goal is that we take the learnings from the RISE Fund and the learnings from all the data I've asked Marta and her team to collect for me in my district and create some programs using the ARPA money to test and learn about what needs to be done in the future. And, and that's why we've convened you all together. And that's why we'll do it one more time. The idea is to come up with some solutions that we can test, uh, grow and implement in our county to, to fix the gaps in our small business world here. So now, um, with no further ado, let me see if I'm going to get this right. Um, Alexina will tell me if I'm wrong. I think you're supposed to close out of this session and go to the next session, but there's no break because the next section is where you'll get to see um, the video. Is that is that right? Uh, you right? Okay. See, exactly. some people, I'm learning new technical skills even today as we speak. So go to the next <laughs> session, everybody, and, and you'll see a little video.
Okay, I think I'm back. We're switching between Zoom and this great platform. Um, so I hope you felt a little inspired by some of the stories of our small businesses. And of course, uh, one of our wonderful CDFI partners, the Dade uh, Federal Credit Union, that's the administrator of the program of the RISE Fund for us, who of course worked with a lot of other web, speaking of interconnected CDFIs, to make sure the loans were, were packaged. Uh, the Miami Bayside Foundation, the Black Business Investment Fund, and uh, Ascendus. This truly was a group effort. We're, we're not done. We think the RISE Fund needs to continue to be capitalized. Uh, we'd like to get to the point at some point in time where we're, we're operating with about $100 million in, in, in capital uh, targeted towards smaller businesses, right? The ones that would be left out. Um, maybe their credit rating is just a little below what the SBA or a larger bank is used to. But you know, these our CDFIs are used to working with these size businesses. And so they can look at a 580 and they can look at a two-year track record and say, this looks great. Um, our, our goal is to, to build that up. But that, to me, the RISE Fund is one tool in our toolbox. I personally learned so much from all of you and from all of our businesses around the county about what they need. And the county received quite a bit of American Rescue Plan money. Uh, in my district, I have received $2 million. And my plan for that money is to pilot new platforms and assistance for small business owners in District 5, which would get me the ability to test uh, some, some test and learn from some new ideas. And I guess the one last thing I'll leave you with that I learned, which I, I think is, was the most important fact that I learned, is the reason these small businesses are often left on their own or disconnected from one another and from these resources is when we were trying to communicate with them about the RISE Fund, we did everything. I went on TV, um, I did radio interviews, uh, we did press releases, we did social media, and we were getting applications, but not as many as we knew um, we needed to have to help these businesses and get this fund out the door quickly. And it ended up, the way to communicate was literally door to door. And with Urban Impacts Labs help, we literally went through and said, where are businesses registered? and we knocked on doors and we talked to them and we met them face to face. And we said, we think we can help you. Do, you. do you feel like you need any of that? And assisted them literally put together a very personal, personal approach to making sure that, that they were able to participate in this fund or if they didn't wanna participate or didn't need to participate in this, we could connect them to another resource. So even the way we communicate with small businesses needs to be different uh, as we go forward. So I'm definitely looking forward to November 4th to hearing your ideas. I already have a few on my to-do to list to, to share. And I think Miami-Dade County is very, very much committed, not just me in, in District 5, but the, the mayor certainly is committed to making sure we create a different kind of ecosystem for, for small business owners owners going going forward. And, um, and I think Engine was, was mentioned not too long ago, but we have actually hired Engine to look at everywhere in the county, who's working on what for small businesses and economic development and ask them to make some recommendations about how that might be able to be done better. And so they're working directly with the mayor and at the end of the day, I know the mayor is very interested in perhaps reorganizing, realigning to make Miami-Dade County a, a better place to start a business in and, and grow a business in. And whether that means you're, you're a tech company or you're a mom and pop that is trying to expand to a different location, we want to be the place that has all the resources in place to, to make that happen. So I look forward to being part of your team going forward in trying to make some of the great ideas you're presenting a reality. Thank you.
Thank you so much for Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Higgins. Um, it has been an absolute pleasure working with you and your team um, and, and really bringing some of these and this important work to light um, uh, and to life. And so uh, we look forward to working with you and we look forward to working with uh, Mayor Kava and everybody else at the county who, um, who wants to work together. Um, uh, I also wanna thank everyone for joining us today as speakers, as panelists, as moderators, as participants. Um, a special thanks uh, very quickly to Betty Cortina Weiss. Betty was part of the original outreach and media team. So when we did outreach for RISE, she um, led strategic media engagement um, and that was also really powerful in getting uh, the word out. So that combination of outreach and media um, turned to be turned out to be incredibly powerful. Um, so she helped during during that time with Rise, and then came back to lead the development of the Rise documentary that you just saw. Um, so as we close out for today, uh, and I know everybody's uh, tired and we've been online for uh, too many hours, but I'm going to leave you with three quick things that sort of just kind of came to mind as I was listening. Um, as we saw throughout the day, great things happen when we work together. Uh, and to quote, to quote Joe Combs from Microsoft, uh, the challenges we are facing are larger than any one organization. So we do need to work together uh, and, and take a coordinated approach uh, to how, how we tackle some of these problems. Um, but truthfully, that's not always the easiest endeavor. I know firsthand uh, work, working collaboratively with different organizations can be challenging. Um, but the most important piece of that is that it is far and away the most fruitful uh, approach and it collectively makes us better. The second um, thing is really around data and measuring progress. Our approach and programs need to be data-driven. Um, our team has taken a first stab at that data-driven approach and creating a data dashboard that we can use. Um, and that's something that we can continue to do right now. We don't need to wait for the perfect data set. We can continue to build on it. We'll build it as we go. Um, but we really have no excuse to prevent us from making sure that our work is data-informed. Um, and related to that, if we can't measure it, we can't prove it happened, which leads me to number three. Um, and this is uh, none of this, you know, this is to everybody in the room. None of this happens without investment and resources to our potential funding partners in the room and beyond. Um, help us build the strongest and most prosperous, prosperous small business community in the country. That is the promise and potential our community holds. To the small business support organizations and champions in the room, Let's put ourselves in the best possible position by working smart and working together to attract and deploy large investments for our community. So what happens next? Uh, part two of Finance Local will put everything that has inspired us here today to good use via an interactive design workshop um, as, we, as we begin to tackle some of these problems and reach uh, some, you know, begin to like think about the opportunities we heard here today. Um, there is a new date for part two. There was an older date that was floating around earlier, but as Commissioner Hagan said, that's November 4th. Please put a hold on your calendars. Um, you'll be able to register online if you haven't yet at financelocal.miami, um, but we'll also be following up with emails uh, for you on that. Um, a reminder, we have recorded the entirety of, of part one of this session and it will be available to you shortly. We'll also let you know when that's available via email, um, but please know that that's coming. And lastly, a final thank you to our funders, City, Rockefeller Foundation, and Commissioner Eileen Higgins. Thank you so much for making this possible and making the second session possible. Um, a big thank you to Mayor Kava uh, and to all of the commissioners for the recently approved funding that will help access continue its uh, work throughout Miami-Dade. And I wish you all a wonderful afternoon and hope to see you again soon.